Hey everyone, my name is Carl and you're listening to Filling It In by Bulag Bandit Media. Today I want to talk about a post I recently made on my website, www.bulagbanditmedia.com. This post is called Japanese Love and Other Events in Filipino History. The title is inspired by a book I read over the summer called White Love and Other Events in Filipino History by Vincente Rafael. One thing that I really enjoyed about this book is it brings parts of history that we don't typically talk about or mention. This got me rolling recently when I was in a class for Filipino culture and language. We were discussing uh, some stories that were part of the indigenous histories and cultures of certain groups in the Philippines. And a point in the discussion came up where we talked about how these stories and other facets of Filipino indigenous cultures and even contemporary modern cultures aren't discussed and they aren't put into the prominence, even though they should, because the Philippines is our nature and this is our community. Something that I picked up on in the conversation was the nature of erasure when these other forms of international media like K-pop, like manga and anime, like I focused on in the article, enter the Philippines. I'm really happy that there are other forms of international media that are getting the recognition that they deserve. Mabuti na meron na silang karangalan dun sa buong mundo. I also really think that diversity is important and we need to have a cultural diversity to continue living in a way that we can respect one another. We have to do those things right though. Diversity is a tricky space, but the most important part to diversity is that there's equality and equity in the way that we administer diversity. When countries like Japan give out their international media to third world countries, the global south, I think there's a power dynamic there that doesn't really fit what I think is fair diversity. Because they are in the global north and they have substantial amounts of wealth that the Philippines and other third world nations don't have, their culture gains more relevance even though they shouldn't. There should be an equal amount of relevance, for example, of Filipino culture, just like the stories that we were talking about in our class. A quote I walked away that class with that was really, really impactful was that every day, stories like the ones that we discussed in class aren't told is the day that imperialism wins, that neocolonialism wins. Those forms of neocolonialism, it's hard to see, but they fall under the category of soft power. Soft power is exercised in countries like the Philippines because we have less power than the people that have bigger soft power. That would be places like South Korea and Japan. K-pop, anime, and manga are fueled by those nations. And they intend probably really good things. They just want to share their culture. But the way that it's manifesting is another story. The way it's manifesting is almost like they're trying to erase and take over the cultural landscape in places like the Philippines. There are many people in the Philippines who like to disavow or look down upon the fact that they're Filipino in lieu of these other cultural fascinations. It's okay to like K-pop. It's, like, it's okay to like anime. It's okay to like manga. I do. I have a significant anime um, shirt collection and I watch a lot of K-dramas from, from time to time. But it's not the only thing that I do. And I certainly don't look down upon or have a little shame to say that I'm Filipino. How many times have I seen people with Korean hangul or hiragana or katakana in their uh, Instagram bios? It's just really indicative of what's happening. We have to be steadfast in the ways that we like things. We have to temper our love and desire for these different cultures. And it's not because I don't want to see them to be successful. It is that we are not successful yet. We are not, not well known. We are respected in the realm of diversity. We can see that in the countries that 
are doing what they're doing now to the Philippines. I went to an international college that was run by a Japanese university, and my diversity was not respected. Being Filipino to them was sort of like an afterthought. They never cared to ask about it. They never cared to ask about my culture. They were never excited to learn about my culture. When there were people that I knew that were partially Filipino, they liked to shy away from it. They didn't want to speak to Tagalog. And I get it. That they have a different identity. But it's not something that they should be ashamed of or that they should have to hide. They should be proud in being both. As a Filipino-American, I understand that. But for some of these people, they've lived this way, they've lived this way their whole life, these, these students that I've met. So I have to ask, what else do we need to do? Number one, we have to start learning and we have to start taking an interest in our own culture. In Hawaii, we have so many Filipino people and I'm really sad that we still don't have a curriculum for Filipino language or Filipino studies. I know that this is a difficult process, that it requires people with great amounts of motivation. But if we don't start with ourselves, then this will go nowhere. I have taken this to heart and I've begun learning myself. I've started taking that class and I've been reading more and more books on it. I've decided to join a few community organizations and to make sure that I'm in touch with the different perspectives that exist. People need to take whatever actions they can. Of course, I know that there are some people who can't join a class. They don't have the means to, or they don't have the time to, or they don't have the time to join a community organization, but to do what you can to learn and get informed. That's what we can do. Number two is making sure that we affirm to ourselves and we love our culture. Having the skin that we have and having the blood that we have run through our veins is not something that should be shameful at all. This is something that we should be okay with and eventually love. For a long time in my life, I had a difficulty with this. I wanted to go somewhere else and be someone else. Because in reality, I was sort of an empty shell. I didn't know what it really meant to be Filipino. Yes, I knew the language. Yes, I'd read some things, but it was not nearly enough to come up with my conception of what it was like being Filipino. Especially growing up where I am, there are so many questions as to how we fit into categories. Are we Pacific Islanders? Are we Hispanic, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Those are answers that we have to put into the category of education. But in the meantime, we have to know that at the very minimum, the very least, we are Filipino. No matter how much we are, because that blood quantum stuff is absolutely rubbish. Right? Number one, we have to know that no matter how much Filipino we are by blood or percentage or whatever, that we are still Filipino. And that there is nothing that we can do in our life that will make us not Filipino. It runs in our veins and it comes from our ancestors. That's a right that we cannot take away. That is something that really is unalienable because it is the very fabric of who we are. Because it is who we are, we must respect ourselves and what we are. So it should be part of a conception that. Because we love ourselves, we love also that we are Filipino or whatever else that we are. Um, for those of us who are um, mixed, we could say, you know, there's a lot of, for example, um, black American Filipinos who are um, partially black or, and Filipino. Then we must love that both we are Filipino, that we are black, that we are, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. These are things that we can do on our own and they are Discussions that we can have with other people because I know for a fact, because I felt this way, that if somebody had given me this talk or had a conversation with me about it, asked me some questions, the ball would have started rolling. I only had these kind of ideas late into relatively in the scale of things my life. Because obviously I'm only in my 
my 20s. But realistically, the latter part of what I have lived is when I realized this. In summary, we have to be very careful in the ways that we enact diversity. And we have to value who we are and put that first. Because ultimately, if we don't stand up for ourselves, then no one else will. Hey, thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe to help keep the show going. You can also view more cool content and my blog on my website, www.bulagbanditmedia.com. You can also try following me on Twitter and Instagram at The Bulag Bandit. Please take care out there and have a great day. Maraming salamat.